Hello! So, today we're doing some tarot with Rosianna. Hello! Collaborate with others in our communities. Oh my hey. god, that's all we're doing! <laughs> After writing a thesis about female puberty and sexuality... What? Tarot <laughs> is real. <laughs> This is your tarot deck. Yeah, so this is a deck I actually got in Salem when I went to Salem. Um, okay, that's I had cool. to kind of get a deck in Salem. Um, it was the most hipster witch shop that I've ever been into. <laughs> it was very like trendy millennial yeah. witch shop, but I had a lot of fun in there. And actually, th this deck is all um, women throughout history and of like contemporary importance and you, you know, just it's just really cool cards. Tell us a bit about tarot. I invited you into this video because of all my friends, you know the most. Um, <laughs> But that more goes to show that I don't really have many friends that are into tarot. Yeah. Well, so I got into it because my sister um, is really, really, really into tarot and okay. really into like very, she's very new agey in a lot of ways and likes different things. Is that like the crystals and the sage as crystals, well? Crystals, she likes. Horoscopes. Um, yeah, she's also, I think she's just, she's much more open than I am in a lot of ways. If it's not science, then I have no interest. I'm a bit of a cynic. And initially I was a bit like, what is this? <laughs> But for me, what I found that I really like about it is that it helps me have figure out my responses to problems. Exactly. And it, yes. I, can, I use it as a tool to kind of learn to listen to myself, both what I'm worrying about, because you start, or I start every tarot reading by asking a question as I'm like shuffling the cards and thinking about where we would approach it mm -hmm. So um, with. So it kind of helps me think like, what is actually the thing that I want an answer for? And then, as I respond to certain cards and get certain readings, my responses to it are, are most telling. Yeah. I try and compare it to that scene in Friends where um, Rachel's doing the pregnancy test and Phoebe tells her that it was negative and she gets really sad. She's like, no, it was actually positive, but that's your real reaction yeah. to it. And it's my mum always says when it comes to making decisions, flip a coin but it's like how you react to the coin flip and not actually what the coin flip says. So interesting. You know, I've done tarot with a lot of our friends. <laughs> um, sometimes they're like really like creeped out by it. And um, I think it just depends like what your relationship is to, again, like different ways of thinking. Yeah. My first like introduction to tarot, um, this woman did a, like just a past, present, future uh, draw for me. And the past and the present cards made so much sense to me. I was like, Oh my god, yes. And the future card, I was like, no freaking clue. Yeah. Like, she read the, interp the, the, the interpretation of it, and I was like, I have no idea. But that kind of makes sense, because it's like, in your future. Yeah. So you're like, whatever. And I was like, trying to grasp at straws of like, what it could mean in my life. Oh, I asked it a question about like, my love life. And then, in hindsight, I'd like, I was like, oh my god, that card was predicting my current partner, Dan. Yeah. But obviously anything could have happened to me and I would have been like, oh, in hindsight, that card was predicted it. Okay, so what are we doing today? For me. For all you. about me. <laughs> it's all about you. So I was thinking we'd do a Celtic cross because okay. that's quite um, a common uh, tarot spread. So you can do lots of different things. You mentioned the three card spread. That's what I do most, which is this idea of putting three cards to represent past, present and future of a specific situation. But with this, it gives you a bit more of like an expansive view about like what's going on with the situation. Okay. Yeah. Um, the first thing that you need to do is think of a question and while you're thinking, also shuffle the card. I don't, I've actually been struggling to think of a question because at the moment I'm like, my life's pretty great. Like, <laughs> it doesn't have to be- Like I'm not one. making any decisions. Sometimes even when I don't uh, know what to ask, I can ask things like, what do I need to know? What are the cards I need right now? And it's quite open, it's not specific, but it's helpful. Maybe I'll ask something like that. What am I missing? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> or like, what am I not seeing clearly? I find like asking the questions and also taking the time to do things like shuffling, even though sometimes I think it you're feels You're already a bit thinking gimmicky. about the answers whilst you're shuffling. Yeah, and you're also like putting yourself in the headspace of like, for the next however many minutes, I am going to focus on where I'm at, where my head's mm -hmm. at. Um, which is good because I don't do that very yeah. often. Yeah. The turbulence that I've had in the last year, yeah. I feel like I'm so like settled now. Mm -hmm. Like there are a few areas that still like obviously there's always gonna be bumps in the road, but like in the grand scheme of things when you zoom out, I'm like I'm like, whoa, what do I need to look out for? Like yeah. what's coming up? How should I approach this next stage in my life now that I'm like doing good again? Yeah, so those are some general questions. That's, what, general, that's what we're going to... your mind. That's what's on my mind. Yeah. There we go. I'm going to do these, like, face up. Sometimes I do them face down and, like, reveal them. Mm -hmm. But face up, I feel like, will give us a good idea. So this is 
your um, present card. This is the challenge. That what's that one? The past, the future. I don't know. I love this one. Above, below. My God, I got the hermit in the first ever drawer I did. Did you really? Yeah. That's really funny. <laughs> Advice. External influences. Eleanor Macron. Hopes and or fears. Yeah, Eleanor's popped up a lot today. Yeah. Um, She's a, and a sieve. <clears throat> outcome. Awesome. Lovely. I feel like at this point I need to say that uh, this video is not sponsored by Big Potato Kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely, completely unrelated. Now what? So now we go through them, um, each section of the Celtic cross, mm -hmm. um, so that we can understand what's going on. So the present is like what's happening right now at present. It's like in your past, present, future. Which is the present. Which is underneath here. Oh, okay. So we've got under here, we've got <clears throat> Mary Lou Williams, who is the Page of Pentacles. The Page of Pentacles. The Page of Pentacles mm -hmm. is a card that indicates manifesting opportunities, often in places one wouldn't expect to find them. As the Page of Pentacles, Mary Lou encourages us to collaborate with others in our communities. Oh my hey! God, that's all we're doing <laughs> it's right now. Present. It's the current <laughs> present. Mary is real. <laughs> Um, and to seek out new venues for performance, whatever that may mean in your life. The Page of Pentacles encourages you to seek inspiration in your surroundings without being afraid to ask others for help. How can you share Oh my god, I've just gifts? hired an assistant. You have? Yeah. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> How can you share your gifts and skills with others? What work do you find yourself most drawn towards? I feel like that's a really hopeful first card. That's a really good I one. I like it. I like it. That's really good. And then I think the second one is the challenges. Yeah. And that's what Harriet Tubman is currently. Yeah. Over, like, obstructing my present. Yeah. And even if it's like, you know, not like a negative thing, it could still be a, it could still be a challenge. Motivation, momentum, travel, and relocating. So that could be a challenge. That could be a challenge. Motivation. If, if I relocated. Motivation is always a challenge. Not planning on <laughs> relocating. But. She bears an important message. Find your North Star and run towards it. Making a decision is one thing, but acting on that decision is often much more difficult. It's possible that during your journey, you will face obstacles that will make you want to turn back, stay where you are, or simply stop making progress. Harriet tells you that this is not an option. <laughs> Go forth, have faith, move ahead. What decisions are you going to take to advance in your life? I like that. What, obviously, I'm projecting onto this as my yeah. own experience, which is that I do make a lot of decisions, which is that I come up with a lot of ideas, but then I never act on them. Interesting. Just either I'm like, I just come up with excuses of like, I don't know how, I don't have enough time. And, and, and Dan is always calling me out on it. Just like, I'll come up with another idea and he'll be like, I'll care about that and listen when you like do those other things you said. <laughs> Four of Cups, this is your past. My past. So your past is uh, rediscovery, take notice, and contemplation. Often a difficult or undesirable situation. <laughs> Sorry, I <I'm laughs> know immediately what I'm thinking about with this. I wonder. <laughs> it's fertile ground for creativity, epiphanies, and finding new sources of joy. Uh -huh. Alice's card reminds us that sometimes this takes a little bit of work. Sometimes it may take a great deal of work. Don't be afraid to explore new, previously unknown ways of living and thriving. Is there an unseen gift to be found in your experiences? <laughs> this is so ridiculous. I hate it when it's like this because I'm like, obviously Tower is real and yeah, this is it's, perfect. It's creepy, isn't it? I understand why some of my friends are hesitant to do it. You probably guessed I'm thinking about like my surgeries and stuff last year. I think sun is your future card. And that's one of my oh, favourite cards. The sun. Oh, I am always told that if the sun is in your spread, then just generally it makes the whole spread like more positive. It I think it does. It brightens <laughs> the spread. Joy, triumph, musical. Oh my god, I'm gonna be in a musical. <laughs> Cheerfulness, <laughs> optimism, summer. Summer is summer in the future. future. Summer is in the future. Dad, it's real. <laughs> the sun represents a choice to be joyful, like the self possessed and consummate performer, Sister Rosetta. What gifts do you possess that you could share with others? How can you enlighten those around you and bring them joy? Aww. Oh, I like that it's not just about like you receiving joy, but like you sharing. you sharing the joy. I feel like there's a lot of collaboration so far in mm. this um, spread. Um, so this is the above card. What does this mean? It reflects the querent's goal, aspiration, or best outcome with regards to the situation. It is what the querent is working towards consciously as they attempt to resolve the issue. So I'm working towards becoming a hermit. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the hermit traditionally represents growth and achievement. And in other decks, the card depicts a solitary hooded figure holding a lantern. This card represents a quest for truth and the sharing of knowledge. Emily pursued writing throughout her life as her passion and unwittingly passed on her wisdom to future generations, guiding others towards their own spiritual and intellectual awakenings. 
As a single woman who lived her life largely apart from others, she embarked on a quest of personal fulfillment that left little room for socialization, and she abandoned the conventional paths of marriage and motherhood for the more difficult roads of scholarship and creation. <laughs> While we cannot all live as she did, we can certainly take lessons from her life. How can you be content in your solitude? What knowledge lurks within you wanting to be shared with others? So I need to break up with Dan. <laughs> and become a writer. And become a writer. Yeah. And become an introvert. Yeah. And then live at the end of someone's garden. Oh, no, wait, no, that's not what I have to do. This is what it's telling me that I actually want. Yeah. Or that I, I don't know. I still haven't quite got to the place where I, like, am not always getting FOMO. Um, like, always feeling like I still need, like, other people's validation and yeah. um, that kind of thing. So, to me, I'm like, cool, the best situation is that I actually can finally let go of those things and yeah. be like 100% content like without needing yeah other people's approval maybe no I feel like that makes a lot of sense and that will say like speaks to me <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is your below card is the um unconscious subconscious yeah subconscious realm and delves much deeper into the core foundation of the situation oh, damn. the underlying feelings and trends associated with the situation and can indicate what is truly driving the query wit learning, observations, idealistic, storyteller, energetic. The Page of Swords is attentive to her surroundings, preparing herself for whatever comes next. This card also represents a youthful idealism in the face of society's restrictions. Jane's card reminds you to keep your eyes open for humour and for love. Notice the funny things happening around you. What difficult situations in your life can you make light of? Yeah, the inner, this is like inner child. Yeah, like yeah, that's one hundred percent what drives me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. <laughs> yeah, the advice card takes into account all that is happening within your life, and presents a recommendation for what approach can be taken to address the current challenges. And that is the Nine of Cups. Who is on that Nine of Cups? It is Eloisa Diaz. Great. I think she's an artist, maybe. Mm. Satisfaction, accomplishment, and good health. Good health! Eloisa obtained her degree in early 1887 after writing a thesis about female puberty and sexuality. What? <laughs> she was the first woman to become a doctor of medicine in the content of South America. This is really cool. Guys, guys, tarot is real. <laughs> Eloisa Diaz of the Nine of Cups asks, What are the qualities, events, people and things in your life that already give you satisfaction? How can you increase your own level of gratitude? Is there something you can do to make the world a healthier place for other people? Aww. That's so great. I love that. I love that you got her. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Thanks for the advice, Eleanor. Yeah. I'm very excited to learn about um, whatever this next one is. So Eleanor of Aquitaine. These are, this is your external influences. Okay, cool. So what are the things that are um, around you that are going to maybe help or affect the way you um, Interesting. could get to your outcome? <laughs> so the main themes of her are many options... Wish fulfillment, dreams come true. The Seven of Cups is a card of choices. Many are good, but this isn't always the case. <laughs> Eleanor of Aquitaine was born into a life that would grant her not only material wealth, but richer and more varied choices than any other medieval European woman had. The Seven <laughs> of Cups indicates to us that we make our destiny through our decisions. Hmm. We greatly influence how we feel through what we think and visualize for ourselves. Eleanor's card asks, asks us to be consciously aware of our desires. What in the most or even subconscious thoughts and feelings are affecting your choices? What options do you need to consider before making a decision? Okay, so like if it's about external influences. Mm. I feel like she had a lot of choices to make, a lot yeah. of decisions, and the people telling her which decisions were important, but actually it came down to her at the end, and I feel like that's kind of maybe one of the challenges of the external influence, yeah. other people telling but you what your desires are. It just feels very, like, ridiculously coincidental that, like, the card about decision-making and external influences came down in the position of external influences. Yeah. I'm like, Tower is real! <laughs> the Eight of Swords, Georgiana Cavendish. Um, that is the hopes and or fears. <gasps> My hopes yeah. and fears. Hopes and fears are closely connected. So sometimes a hope can also be a fear or a fear can also be a hope. Trapped. Repressed feelings, mistakes, and false appearances. Georgiana Cavendish, Duchess of Devonshire, represents the ominous circumstances of the Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords indicates a situation in which you feel trapped, much like Georgiana may have felt trapped by her unhappy marriage and her mounting debts. The Eight of Swords also tells you that... Oh my god, I'm in a relationship and I have a mortgage. <laughs> 
<laughs> the Ace of Swords also tells you that there are happy possibilities that you may not be acknowledging. Georgiana's example represented here in the Eight of Swords reminds you to ask yourself, how can you untangle yourself from a negative situation? There are people out there who can help you waiting for you to find them. Seek those people out. I always l like to be in a position where I'm like always free to like do what I want to do. Yeah. And like make my own decisions. Uh, Outcome cards, Seven of Pentacles, Earth a Kit. And it's sunflowers. So this is going <laughs> well. <laughs> so it's a representative of where the situation is headed and whether slash how it will be resolved. Acknowledgement. Benefits of an accomplishment and promotion. Oh my god. So, I'm so excited for your promotion. Can I promote myself? Yeah. Yeah. I promote myself all the time. <laughs> Earth Kit embodies the perseverance of the Seven of Pentacles. This card is linked to having a vision. It means looking at your accomplishments and understanding how they will fit together to form a life well lived. The Seven Aww. of Pentacles also represents investing in what's important to you and patiently awaiting the rewards. Earth Kit worked hard and passionately for decades through ups and downs and despite shifts in public opinion. The card prompts us to ask, where do I want to invest my time, talent, money, and energy? What could the results be? And that's a nice open-ended one for like, the f not the future, but the outcome if I continue. Yeah. Cool. It feels very like focused. Yeah. I don't know, I'm, like, I think this is a really good little spread. I feel like it talks to itself quite nicely. The only one that doesn't feel like it fits is the hopes and fears, but that yeah. kind of makes sense that hopes and fears is like, I don't know, Oh, I loved this. Yay, I'm glad. <laughs> and it's always really fun when like someone really unlikely whips out a tarot deck and I'm like, oh my god, did you tell Yeah. Because like if you think about when you're trying to make like big decisions in life, there are so many different things that people do. Some people like write pros and cons lists, mm -hmm. some people sleep on it. You know, like this is just another tool in your kit. Yeah. Thanks so much, Rosianna. Um, thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, watch the other videos in this series um, <laughs> doing weird personality things. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments about tarot. Are you into it? Are you like, super not into it? Make sure you go check out um, Rosanna's YouTube channel as well. When she does upload, the videos are great. Thanks, <laughs> but I really don't upload that much. <laughs> um, and make sure you subscribe because I put out new videos every week. I'll see you soon. Bye.